Well, let me get the steering wheel out of the way. Because I wasn't able to finish uh, review in time, you're getting another likes and dislikes video. This is the Proton Exora, and it's not the latest revision of it. The latest revision was just a very minor visual thing, so I think it's still fair to say this car is very similar to the one that's sold brand new. Mechanically, it's the same, just design-wise, it's a bit more modern than the new one. Uh, the first thing that I liked about this car is that the power and the handling is actually quite good. The car has like 200 newton meters. The car has 200 newton meters of torque. I like that it had that power. Don't take that for, don't take that for granted because a lot of MPVs that are budget oriented they come with smaller engines, 1.5 liter, sometimes 1.4 liter, no turbo. Technically, those are enough to go, you know, up uh, Gunting, you know, that stupid test that everyone likes to talk about. You sometimes do need pulling power, especially when you have, uh, you know, a car full of people. You want to do some overtaking safely. It could be a lorry that's driving very slow. You know, you do need power to, to overtake. And this car does have it. I mean, it's easily one of the fastest cars in this price point. Like I said before, the handling also goes hand in hand with that because it is a, a pretty big car and it's relatively heavy, about 1415 uh, tons but because of uh, Proton's ride and handling expertise even with the torsion beam suspension at the back I think they did a really fine job what I disliked was that the uh, CVT is absolutely yeah. I'm not someone who blanketly uh, disregards CVTs and says they're like the worst gearboxes ever. I understand why manufacturers use CVT. If it's programmed correctly, it will be more efficient than any other gearbox. You can start to see a little bit of its limitations, especially when you're going downhill. If there's no accelerator input, the clutch disengages and then re-engages again. So it's, uh, it's very clumsy. I like that as an MPV, it actually carries out most of its tasks really well. Like it functions well as an MPV. So in this price point, it's the longest and widest, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Bluetooth is a nice bonus. And of course, there's this uh, DVD player, a little bit dated now. But you know, if you have kids and you know, you're shopping in the budget category, having this, I think that adds value as an MPV. The boot space is fair. Uh, we had luggage for six people. Oh, it's getting hot, I need to on deck. As an MPV, it also has nice rear blowers. Every row gets a couple of these blowers at the back and it's easily controlled by the driver up here. That switch right there. I think it's a good position. I don't really have to look at it. I just feel up here and I know where it is. On to the things I disliked. And I think the execution of this car could have been a little bit better. I'll give you an example. The second row of seats, to pull them down is a little bit of uh, hard work. It's not easy to understand the system that they have. In an MPV, how easy it is to fold back seats is very important. People at the back are usually newcomers, you know, if you're a taxi driver or Uber driver, or, you know, new family members that are just coming on board for a day trip, and they won't know how to operate that thing. So you have to get down and, and help them out, or they have to learn it or be taught. So switches and buttons do feel a Switches and buttons are a little bit painful to operate sometimes. Uh, you know, even the signal stock, if you know, if you engage it at the wrong area, you get stabbed by a little pointy thing. And it's a little bit difficult to engage, you know, it's painful to get that in there. You know, it's, it's, it's. I know it feels like nitpicking, but these are things that will genuinely affect how you feel about the car if you're going to own it for more than 3-4 years. The last thing I liked uh, is actually the design. Considering these four things, its age, Proton's uh, small scale, Proton's lack of finance at the time, the fact that it's a budget MPV, I think it's actually not bad. It's not just a bland box, you know. You get this textured pattern on the dashboard. I think the last time I saw this was on the Volvo XC60, the previous generation one under Ford. There are at least three different textures of plastics. It's an MPV and it looks like anyone can be seen driving it and they'll be proud of how it looks like. Design-wise, not too bad. The last thing that I disliked is, I think refinement could have been a bit better. Right now, I mean, I just turned on the engine a few minutes ago. You can probably hear how loud it is. When you drive this car, you feel the vibrations of the engine through the steering wheel. It just feels a little bit like uh, a rush job. If you buy this car used or new, that is what you might like or dislike. Let me know what you think. If you're an Exora owner, please let me know your experience down below. It'll help other potential Exora owners. Uh, yeah, thank you very much.